Like how he just assumed it was going to blow. Because that's what happens in Resident Evil. <laughs> okay, let's get out of here. Yeah. It's a good thing they put this here. Be a real pain in the ass trying to get through this without uh, any health. <laughs> like Leon just assumed the place was going to explode. Go That's what happens in Resident Evil. <laughs> Why is this happening? What's going on? They're nothing now, their master's gone. It's over for them. Huh. You know, you could have just squeezed under this. <laughs> All right. Not bad, Ada. You like thrill rides? I love them. You're gonna love this. I always thought this was goofy. At the end of the original, the escape from here. But whatever. <laughs> God damn it, why is the place exploding? What's happening? <laughs> Hold on. Jet ski has a health bar. Rocks exploding. Actually, quit freaking out. It's fine. It's like the least exciting thing that's ever happened to you today. Mission accomplished, right? Mission accomplished. When you're home safe. Thank you for saving me. Don't mention it. You know, I could put in a word with my dad. Have you assigned to my detail, if you're interested. You don't need me. You proved you could handle yourself. Even if you could use a lesson in knife safety. <laughs> Come on. Let's go home. Condor One? Roost to Condor One, do you read me? Come in. I said come in. Is this thing even on? Leon! Leon, are you and Ashley on right? Where are you? Come on! Okay, we're in the credits. <laughs> so I think we got something like it. 
about um, in the PlayStation 3, Xbox 360 era, we hit at some point during that long generation, we hit what I like to call nowadays as the remaster era. Because it was the first, like, true HD generation, you started to have these sort of HD remasters. The music's not playing. That's what's going on. That's why it feels so weird. The, you started to see these HD remasters of older games, like the Metal Gear Solid games and Shadow of the Colossus and... And um, Final Fantasy X, Silent Hill, those kinds of things. And I, hell, even Resident Evil 4 saw an HD remaster for that generation of consoles. And after, like, the next generation after that, you still saw some of them, like The Last of Us and all that kind of stuff. But then you got what you could probably say is more of the remake era. See, there is a market for these remakes of older games. People want to relive their childhood. They want to have those fond memories brought back upon them. So Resident Evil started doing this a few years back. 2019 saw the release of Resident Evil 2, and it was incredible. I'd say Resident Evil 3 Remake was not quite as significant but it was still all right. And this one here is another great freaking game. And especially for me, for somebody who isn't quite as um, attached to the original Resident Evil. Oh, hold on. I think I got to shut up for a second. Catch me through. I've obtained the amber. Excellent. Just one question. What are you planning to do with this? I do not pay you to ask questions. All you need to know is a new dawn is breaking. A hundred will give their lives so that just one may live. I am expediting that change. So, we're talking millions of casualties. Billions. How ambitious. We're changing course now. So these remakes, they are not always going to follow the original exactly. And in fact, in a lot of cases, I feel like they shouldn't. Say the Shadow, not Shadow, um, Demon Souls remake. It sort of skirts the line between remake and remaster. But it was pretty much exactly the original game over again, just looking a lot better. And the Resident Evil remakes, remake of two had the basic structure of the original game, but it changed it where it felt like it needed to do to make it feel like a more modern game. Resident Evil 3 Remake sort of went off script a little bit more. And then this one was sort of like somewhere in between. I'm wondering here if they're going to show some kind of a change. Like, is there going to be a Resident Evil 5 Remake? I don't know. It wasn't the best game out there. But, you know, I imagine there would be some market for a Resident Evil 5 remake. But if they do do it, like... Ada went and gave Wesker the Plaga Parasite, and Wesker used that for his experiments. So... Um... If, if Ada's gonna refuse to give Wesker the Plaga, how's that gonna affect the story of 5? 
whatever. We're going too far in the future. Maybe there isn't even going to be an RE5 remake. Maybe they'll do Code Veronica or Zero or hell, what I actually want to see them do is a Resident Evil 1 remake. And I know they already remade RE1, but, you know, that was done 20 fucking years ago. And perhaps we should see a more up-to-date version of the game. That would actually be pretty damn good because one of the things that they did in the 2 remake and they threw that away in the 4 remake was to have fewer enemies but have them be more difficult to kill. The zombies in the 2 remake were actually pretty damn intimidating because although they were slow and all of that, they were tremendously difficult to put down. I mean, you would pop them in the head and they'd go down and it's like, oh, and they slowly get back up. It's like, what does it take to kill these things? Resident Evil 4 Remake, although they were a bit of a bitch to kill in the same sense and they didn't move a lot quicker, they were easier to kill in a lot of ways. They absorbed less damage and you were just showered with ammunition. So you never really felt it. The, the re remake of 2 really made you feel sort of like a limited feeling of empowerment because you had your weapons and all that, but you never had enough ammunition to feel comfortable. In the remake of 4, I felt more comfortable than I than not. I always felt like I had enough ammo to get through whatever situation. Even if I had to start like towards the end of an encounter, started to feel a little bit of tension running out of ammunition, it was never that bad. So, the, a remake of 1, a modern remake of 1, could go back to that Resident Evil 2 way of feeling. Gameplay-wise, though, it does sort of feel like the remake of 2 and the remake of 3, only it added the, like, the melee mechanics and all that kind of stuff. So that was pretty good. I definitely, I would say I like this game better than the original version of 4. Again, I liked 4, the original 4, but I'm not one of those people that really feel a super strong attachment to it. Leon is less of a goofy asshole, snarky fuck in this version of the game than he was in the original, although a little bit of that comes through. He wasn't the deepest of characters ever, so he doesn't really get much more treatment in this game. He's still just sort of like a goody two-shoes that's been battle-hardened a little bit. But he's, he's definitely somebody who feels like he's just sort of focused in on his mission. And as a result, he doesn't really feel like that strong of a character. That deep of a character, I should say. Ada in this, I think they botched Ada. The voice actress is just delivering everything with the sort of emotionless droning, the way she delivers her dialogue. And I'm unsure what the hell that's about. Because on one hand, like, she definitely felt like she had an emotional connection to Leon at the end of the remake of 2. And here we are a few years later, and the way she speaks to him and the way she acts tends to show that, you know, she doesn't have any of that connection. But occasionally she does go and do something to help him, which, like, the way she's... The, what she does and her mannerisms sort of clash. And the emotionless way that she delivers her dialogue is just kind of weird. Luis is probably the character that received the most of an overhaul, because in the other, in the original game, he was just sort of like this, um, <laughs> geez, he was a sleazy fuck, but he wasn't around much in the game. He just sort of felt like a character to sort of carry you through the early parts of the game, and then to sort of be a plot device later to deliver the kind of, um, to have been the author of some of the files that you find which explain what the Plaga is, and to have created the device which kills the parasite inside of you. But as a character, he didn't have much of an impact. Plus, he was a goofy, f they were all goofy, everybody in the, in the original was goofy. But the weird thing where he makes a, makes a comment about Ashley's boobs in like a weird life or death situation <laughs> just seems really stupid. Ashley, on the other hand, is another character that, that received a massive overhaul in the way she was portrayed in the game. Now, I'd said before that I never really had that strong of a dislike of Ashley, even though I did find out find her a little bit annoying in the original game because 
Like, she was always in need of assistance. And she didn't stick around with you the entire game, but large portions of the game she was there. She needed to be protected. You needed to use health items on her. And the goofy-ass kind of voice acting that you saw in the mid-2000s, especially in Japanese video games, really shone through with her. She sounded like she was 14 instead of 20. She acted like she was 14 instead of 20. And, you know, it was it was kind of weird. But I understood the character. I understood that she wasn't supposed to be a special forces super cop or whatever the hell Leon is supposed to be, not Secret Service agent. She's just a young woman who's completely out of her depth. She's not in particularly good shape. She doesn't know how to handle herself in any situation. Oh, okay. Okay. Good work. B. I scored a B. Fantastic. And what was I saying? Okay, so I understood why Ashley was the way she was. A combination of what they're trying to do with her character and in the kind of places that video game development was in in 2004 or 5, whenever the hell the original came out. And the way characters were portrayed, the way voice acting was done, all that kind of stuff. So, even though I did find her kind of annoying, having a kind of perspective on why her character was the way she was, sort of excused it away a little bit. Now, in this uh, modern day, creating a character like that, the annoyances of her would shine a little more obviously. So I feel like they did a really good job with updating the way that she looked at the way that she acted and the voice acting and all that kind of stuff really did a lot to sort of um, expand on her character quite a bit more. I think she's dressed kind of weird in this version of the game. Squirts weren't particularly popular back in the mid-2000s, so I don't know why every, or the 90s even, so I don't know why modern interpretations of characters always seem to wear them. But the the weird jacket she was wearing in the beginning was strange and her hairstyle. I don't remember that being popular in the mid 2000s, but fuck whatever. Or nowadays, she's got, she's got helmet head. But they, instead of her being just whiny all the time, she is kind of a little bit whiny in this, but not like overly so. And her kind of mannerisms make her feel a little bit more real but still not like doesn't make her feel like an invulnerable character because there's this kind of uh, trope in modern video games since I don't know maybe nine or ten years ago you started to see this shift where female characters are never really allowed to be portrayed in any kind of a vulnerable way uh, just some modern politics and all that kind of stuff on one hand, I can see why this trend is a thing. On the other hand, taken to an extreme, it can result in characters that are just uninteresting and shallow. So I think they kind of avoided that with this by having Ashley be a little bit more independent. Of course, she's scared and all that, but she does occasionally have to show her own form of bravery and all that kind of stuff. And and contribute to the team as opposed to just being somebody who has to be rescued every minute of every day. Without making her seem like, step back, Leon, I got this kind of thing. Also, to making her seem a little bit more relatable and a little bit more likable by having her actually demonstrate a level of compassion towards Leon when he gets injured or anything like that. She seems to genuinely get upset whenever he gets hurt or if she sees him injured or in pain or anything like that. Goes a long way to sort of um, endearing the player to her character. Now something they did do, which can, I guess it can, it's less, it got less annoying for me the further along I got into the game. But it did seem really annoying where in when you first find her and she's constantly just out of breath. <sighs> Kind of, you know, I felt like she was like 
breathing heavily into your ear. And it's like, geez, what the hell? Of course, the point of that is to show that she's struggling to keep up with Leon because he's a freaking Secret Service agent or whatever. And she is just um, a pampered young woman who's not particularly athletic or anything like that. So she's going to have a hard time keeping up with him. But of course, I can't actually not have her keep up with him because that would make the game a real pain in the ass if you always had to slow down for her to catch up all the freaking time. You can just sort of sprint through a majority of situations here and she will keep up with you, but they needed to portray it as though she was having a hard time, so having her breathing heavy. It was really annoying when it first when I first got her and she was doing it all the time, but as the game progressed, the less and less I noticed it. And I guess it's another thing that sort of humanizes her a little bit and sort of, I don't know, uh, pushes a kind of protective instinct in the player, or at least in, in my case, to sort of not want to see her come to any harm or anything like that. Salazar... I hated Salazar in the original game. He looked like a little... He looked like a kid. And he was... Like... I like the interactions in the original game between Leon and Hunnigan. And Salazar went and sort of hijacked those codec calls. So it's like, I, I, I want to see Hunnigan. Why the hell am I talking to you if I want to have these interactions between Leon and Hunnigan? Hunnigan, by the way, is a character that like actually got pushed down in this version of the game, which is a bit of a disappointment. But I'm not really going to go into that. She, there's, just, there's just less of her in this game. Salazar, I always found annoying in the original game. And in this one, he's a little bit more understandable. I mean, he's contemptible as fuck. He's a disgusting little shit. But his... I mean, he definitely had, like, a Napoleon complex going on in the original game, and it's definitely shining through with an even greater extent in this one. But he seems much more cruel and disgusting in this version, as opposed to just being, like, a kid who... A, a, an adult that looks like a child who acts like everybody around him is a toy. In this one, he's a little bit more... more quite a bit more sick in a way and he seems to stick around for a little bit longer in the game uh krauser krauser felt like a tacked on character in the original and honestly he feels like a tacked on character in this one i think they went wrong with his voice acting by having him have this really raspy voice instead of a deeper voice like in the original and they made some changes to his character. In the original, he was actually working for Wesker, and he was just sort of infiltrating Sadler's cult in order to get the Plaga Parasite. Which, like, how many... like <laughs> Ada was already in there, and like, how many different agents do you need in this thing, Wesker? Why don't you go in there with your superpowers and do it your damn self? But he was... But uh, Sadler didn't trust him, as revealed in some of the files you find and all that kind of stuff. In this, they had him be sort of be a true believer, a belief in the power of Sadler, and seem to have completely eliminated that whole Wesker and Ada connection from Krauser. Which, honestly, I was fine with. I just think the voice acting with him having that raspy-ass voice instead of a deep voice doesn't quite fit the look of the character. Big jacked up motherfucker should have a big jacked up motherfucker voice. I wanted the fucker to sound like Brock Lesnar is what I'm saying. You know, uh, pull a horseshoe out of his ass and beat him over the head with it kind of thing. Uh, who else we have? Um, Hunnigan, as I said, isn't an, an important character in this. Or either game, really, but lesser in this. She disappears earlier. You don't get the codec call, so you don't see her as much. A little disappointed in there, but she wasn't really much of a character in the original either. Sadler? In the original? What the fuck were they thinking? Of course I know what they were thinking. It was the mid-2000s, and, and the Resident Evil series had been moving away from a sort of serious tone that they were trying for. 
in the earlier games and more towards the over-the-top action and sort of goofy mentality that you saw in Resident, the original RE4. And he was a goofy motherfucker. He was not somebody I could take seriously at all. In this one, he looks... His, his facial expressions are so over-the-top. But he seems like he's insane. He doesn't make weird jokes. He's not goofy at all. He's a little delusional. Like, I don't think his plan for world domination was ever going to work. Even if he managed to send Ashley back with a parasite inside of her, it I don't see his plan working. That's weird nonsense. But, I mean, just because he was doing all this doesn't mean he was smart, you know? Or he wasn't some kind of a threat. But I do like how they sort of amplified the whole religious aspect of the whole thing. Because, although it does feel a little bit redundant, I mean, you do have parasites stuck in people's heads that allow you to control them. What's the purpose of having a uh, religious aspect? Like, worshipping the Plaga itself. And I do wonder, like, is he, like, a true believer in a sense, does he really worship the thing that he's saying he does? Or is it just sort of like, um, just sort of something he does to maintain control over everybody? Anyway, I, I, I'm pretty much with the more serious tone of the remake games, except for the remake of 3, that was goofy as fuck. Um, the more serious tone you see in these games, modern Resident Evil games, compared to some of the older ones, I think it's more of a, his character fits better. So what do I say about this game? I like it more than the original. I wasn't, I did like the original. I thought it was one of the best games of its generation. One of, and if out of the top 10 games of that generation, I say it's number 11. Meaning it's pretty fucking good, but it's not like the best game ever that a lot of other people say seem to think it is. Great game, not a good Resident Evil game, but, you know, great game nonetheless. This game, I feel like it's probably better. Of this generation, uh, let's say this is a PlayStation 5 game and an Xbox Series X game, as opposed to the cross-gen game it actually is. I'd say maybe it's a, it, it's within the top 10. Of course, the generation's not over yet, so we've got several more years of games to be released. But, like, it's within the top 10 now. So... You know, it's better. Facing stuff, uh, stiffer competition nowadays, I think. But, you know. That was my opinions of Resident Evil 4 Remake. Um, that's the end of this, I guess. I've done a lot of games on this YouTube channel over the past 11 or so years. So, if you happen to like what you've seen here, go and check out all my other videos. I did... Resident Evil 1, both Chris and Jill playthrough. I did Resident Evil 2, uh, Leon and Claire's playthrough. I did Resident Evil 3. I did Resident Evil Code Veronica. I did, uh, I guess that was all of, oh, the Resident Evil 2 remake, the Resident Evil 3 may remake. You see the 4 remake here. I've done a bunch of, uh, a whole lot of other games here, the Metal Gear Solid games, whatever. You just go, go take a look through there. Got lots of stuff. So, Check out any of those if you like this for some reason. <laughs> and I'll call it quits now. Thanks for watching.